Good day everyone and welcome back to Nurses Lecture on YouTube channel. My name is Mercy Mary, popularly known as a nurse with the difference, and I make learning easy and accessible for students. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, about 6.2 million adults in the United States have heart failure. What is heart failure? What are the causes of heart failure? What are the types of heart failure? What is the pathophysiology, the nursing intervention, the medical management, and also the nursing diagnosis of heart failure? By the end of this class, you will be able to answer all these questions correctly. But before we go into details, kindly click on subscribe button, turn on the notification button so you don't miss out. Let's go there. Right. Welcome back. Like I earlier said, today we are going to be talking about heart failure. What is heart failure? When we say something failed, what do we mean? When we say a machine failed, what do we mean? When we say an individual failed and has failed an exam, what do we mean? It simply means what we expected of them, they are unable to do it. The function, the role they were supposed to carry out, they are unable to do it. Then we say they have failed. Then we say the machine failed. So then that takes us to the definition proper of what heart failure is all about. Heart failure is the inability of the heart to pump sufficient blood to meet the needs of the tissues for oxygen and nutrients. We all know the major function of the heart is to pump blood into circulation to ensure that our body gets the necessary oxygen, to ensure that our body gets the necessary nutrients needed for growth, needed for development, and needed for us to carry on with our daily activities. So when the heart is unable to carry out this function of pumping out blood into circulation, then we are free to say the heart has failed, which is heart failure. One thing I would like to know is that the heart failure, in heart failure, the ventricles are what are being affected. The ventricle is what is being affected. The ventricle is unable to carry out that function of pumping blood through the pulmonary valve or the aortic valve into their various segments. So when that is not taking place, they will say what the heart has failed. Then that takes us to the causes of heart failure. To so remember the causes of heart failure, Remember the word failure. To remember the causes of heart failure, remember the word failure. F in failure means 40 heart valves. Remember the heart has four valves. The right atrioventricular valve, the left atrioventricular valve, the aortic valve, and also the pulmonary valve. When there is faulty heart valves, that can result in what? Heart failure. We can have stenosis, which is a narrowing of the heart valve, or regurgitation, which is a leakage of the heart valve. When such occurs, we say the heart has what? Failed. Then the other is A and failure, which is arrhythmia. Arrhythmia happens, can result in the heart beating too fast or too slow. There's irregular rhythm of the heart. For example, the atrial fibrillation and also tachycardia are examples of what arrhythmia that can cause what heart failure. Then the third, which is I, is infarction. I know a lot of us must have heard about myocardial infarction. What is myocardial infarction? Myocardial infarction is the death of the muscle layer of the heart, the death of the muscles of the heart. And when that happens, definitely the ventricles will not be able to carry out that function of pumping blood into the various segments. And what can cause myocardial infarction include your adrenal pectoris and coronary atherosclerosis. And what can cause that is coronary atherosclerosis and adrenal peritoris. In coronary atherosclerosis, there's accumulation of fat in the coronary artery. There's what? There's accumulation of fat in the coronary artery. And when there is accumulation of fat in the coronary artery, the the muscles of the heart will not be getting enough blood. The muscles of the heart will not be getting enough nutrients. The muscles of the heart will not be getting enough oxygen. And all this will result in what? Myocardial infarction. 
Then the L is lineage. Your lineage matters a lot. Hereditary. For example, your grandparents have it, your grandmom has it, have it, your granddad have it, your mom, your dad. You as an individual, you are predisposed of going down with what? You are at risk, I mean, of going down with what? Heart failure. Then you is uncontrolled hypertension. Uncontrolled what? Uncontrolled hypertension. What is hypertension? Hypertension is an increase in the blood pressure above 140 90 milligram mercury. And when that continues for a long period of time, not properly managed, not properly taken care of, it can result in what? Heart failure. Then the arrow is recreational drug use. Recreational drug use have to do with the use of cocaine, drug abuse generally, excessive intake of alcohol. That is why we advise our patients with heart diseases to reduce their intake of alcohol to help them bring their hearts back to normal. Then the last one which is E for failure, but here it's I which is invaders. Invaders such as your bacteria, your when they enter into the heart, they are going to cause destruction to the heart and that destruction will not allow the heart to carry out its function. Remember, the causes of heart failure, remember the word failure. F, 40 heart valve. A, arrhythmia. I, infarction. L, the lineage. U, uncontrolled hypertension. R, recreational drug use. And E, invaders which are your microorganisms could be bacteria or virus then that takes us to the types of heart failure remember now in remember previously we said that what is being affected in the heart that results in heart failure is the ventricle from that we have two types of heart failure we have the right-sided heart failure and the left-sided heart failure as the name implies it already tells you what it's all about in the right-sided heart failure, the right ventricle is affected. In the left-sided heart failure, the left ventricle is affected. But before we go into the pathophysiology proper, I would like to I would like us to go over the anatomy and physiology of the heart. Remember, during the blood flow through the heart, deoxygenated blood comes through the inferior and superior venal cava. From the inferior what? From the inferior and super from the inferior and superior vena cava, it goes to where it goes into the right atrium. From the right atrium, it passes through the right atrioventricular valve into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it passes through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery and goes to where the lungs. In the lungs, the blood is being oxygenated and it passes through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. From the left atrium, it passes through the left atrioventricular valve into the left ventricle. And from the left ventricle, it passes through the aortic valve into the aorta and to all parts of the body. So when the right side of the heart is being affected, the right ventricle will not be able to pump the blood through the aortic valve. Sorry, the right ventricle, I mean, will not be able to pump blood through the pulmonary valve, through the pulmonary valve, into the pulmonary artery, and into the lungs. What happens is that there will be accumulation of fluid, there will be accumulation of that blood in where, there will be accumulation of that fluid in the right ventricle. And when there's accumulation of fluid in the right ventricle, it is going to result in what? Accumulation of fluid in the right atrium. That accumulation of fluid in the right atrium is going to result in fluid being in the periphery. So there's going to be peripheral edema. The liver will also be affected and that can result in what? Hepatomegaly. So just take note of the fact that in a right-sided heart failure, there's accumulation of fluid, there's edema as a result of what? Accumulation of fluid in the right ventricle. Then in the left-sided heart failure, the left ventricle is being affected. The left ventricle is unable to pump blood through the aortic valve into the aorta and to all parts of the body. What happens? There will be accumulation of fluid in the left ventricle which leads to the accumulation of fluid in the left atrium and that leads to the accumulation of fluid that is the blood in the lungs and that can result in what pulmonary conjection take note of the fact that in the left sided heart failure there's what pulmonary conjection and in the right sided heart failure there's what peripheral edema so that takes us to the signs and symptoms of 
the right-sided heart failure. To remember the signs and symptoms of the right-sided heart failure, remember the word swelling. Remember in right-sided heart failure, there's word swelling. To remember the signs and symptoms of right-sided heart failure, remember the word swelling. S, swelling of the legs, hands, and the liver. W, which is weight gain. E, there's edema. L, large neck vein. L, lethargic. N, nocturial and G, get. That get to is the, the, the abdominal gait will be increased because there's what? Hepatomegaly, which is the increase of the liver. In terms of nocturia, there will be excessive um, urine output. This patient wants to go and urinate, like there's frequency in the at night. He always wants to go and urinate. In terms of lethargic, there's this feeling of tiredness. Then in terms of edema, there will be swelling as a result of accumulation of food and that will result in what? Weight gain. So remember the word for signs and symptoms of right-sided heart failure. Remember the word swelling. Then that takes us to the signs and symptoms of the left-sided heart failure. To remember the signs and symptoms of the left-sided heart failure, remember the word drowning. Remember the word drowning. D for dyspnea. Arrow for rays, which are crackles. Whenever you put a stethoscope in the patient, you learn some crackle sound, crack, crack, crack. Then D is for dyspnea, like I just said, which is difficult in the breathing. Then O, atopnea, W, weakness. N, nocturnal paroxysm dyspnea. I, increased heart rates. N, nagging cough. And G, gaining weights. Then that takes us to the diagnostic tool for heart failure. One of the diagnostic tools for heart failure is the echocardiogram. Echo what? Echocardiogram. And know that is the chest x-ray. We also have the heart catheterization. The electrolytes check because there's going to be movements of this electrolyte. There's going to be an imbalance in the electrolytes. Then pox oximeter is to actually check the, um, the oxygen saturation rates of the body to make the body is getting enough oxygen. Then we can do the arterial blood gas and also the BUN and the creatinine level can be taken. Heart failure can be maintained with medication, diet, and other treatment. But this same heart failure can be triggered by high sodium intake. Too much salt. High sodium intake, it can also be triggered by infection. It can also be triggered by uncontrolled fibrillation and renal failure. The next video is going to be talking about nursing intervention and also the medical management of heart failure. Thank you very much for staying tuned. Thank you very much for watching our video. Thank you very much for listening to us. Don't forget to like, don't forget to drop your comments in the comment section. See you in our next video.